so let us start with the last topic of this module that is shrinkage and shrinkage the concept of shrinkage is basically the change in volume of the concrete that occurs and because of that volume change in the concrete the cracks appear in, in the concrete so such cracks are called as shrinkage cracks and you can see here how they uh, are visible on the surface of the concrete now this phenomena is very important and uh, I always uh, like to give a uh, relatively simple example like when we need a dough, uh, a wheat dough and we keep it in the kitchen and now a freshly made dough will have water into it but if we keep it on the surface uh, of our kitchen and uh, we leave it there then the water inside that dough will slowly start drying up and because of that then you will see that there are some some cracks that appear on that dough so this is almost a similar process where the water inside the concrete starts drying up inside the fresh concrete starts drying up and uh, then because of that the volume changes happen and the cracks appear now there are various me uh, mechanisms through which these cracks happen that we will be seeing this volume change is important to study since it causes cracking in concrete and uh, once crack is initiated in a concrete it definitely compromises with the durability of the concrete and once durability is compromised the steel will start corroding and the entire structure will uh, be, uh, be deteriorating in its strength it is difficult to make a concrete which does not shrink and uh, since water dries up from the body so we need to limit the cracks to as minimum as possible so there are a few methods as well which will prevent or which will reduce the shrinkage that also we will be seeing to control this shrinkage we need to understand all aspects of why it happens at the first place so why the shrinkage is happening at the first place if we try to understand that then it will be easier to control it now there are four types of shrinkage first is plastic shrinkage second to second drying shrinkage third autogenous shrinkage and fourth carbonous shrinkage so all of these will be seen one by one let us first see the plastic shrinkage now this word plastic is associated with concrete when it is in its plastic stage now what is that stage in that stage is the stage when the concrete can flow or when it is fresh uh, or where, where it is not hardened right so that stage is called as a plastic shrinkage so the shrinkage that is associated with that stage would be called as plastic shrinkage now one thing we understood from shrinkage is that shrinkage happens because of the loss of water so we need to understand how the water will be lost when the concrete is in its plastic stage the way how water can be lost in this stage is the aggregates absorbing the water so the required water to keep concrete fresh and to uh, to avoid shrinkage that water is being absorbed by the aggregates so there is a loss of water there and because of that shrinkage happens that is one of the cause Sec uh, and because of that obviously the there will be reduction in the volume of the concrete and therefore shrinkage cracks then there is also one more cause that if if our exposed area is very large for example we are doing concreting of slabs during the daytime now slabs are generally very large and they have a very large exposed area so in the such in such time if that exposed area is exposed to sun the water will start drying up much faster because of even even from that plastic concrete so because of that what will happen again the volume reduction will happen and shrinkage will take place so to avoid this what we can do first of all to avoid the first cause that is the water being absorbed by the aggregate this can be taken care in mixed design when we design even in the future lectures we will be doing concrete mixed design so at that time you will understand how we take care of this absorption quality of aggregates so we add more water so the aggregates can absorb and even after that more water is still there so this can be taken in during the mixed design part the second thing uh, the water being dried up by sun the, there is a very simple uh, solution for this you don't do concreting at in the morning you do it in the night that's it so 
The way to avoid this is by casting the slab during the night time. Further, the plastic shrinkage can be reduced by covering the concrete by polythene sheets, keeping the surface moist, etc. so that the water is not lost. So this is also uh, one of the way how we prevent the shrinkage from happening. We cover it by plastic sheets so that the water does not uh, leave the body of the concrete, it stays inside. And uh, also sometimes you might have seen in constructions, they place jute bags, some brown color uh, fabric they place over the concrete and that fabric is um, sprinkled with water so that is also for the same reason uh, to avoid the shrinkage now this graph is, gives here how much shrinkage can happen after the casting is done so this is like 1 fourth or 15 minutes this is 30 minutes so here it is uh, 30 minutes, this is 45 minutes and this is 1 hour 60 minutes then 2 hours, 4 hours, 8 hours and 24 hours now this will again depend on the structure that we are inspecting for shrinkage whether it is just a cement paste or it is a mortar or that is cement sand uh, mixture or it is a concrete cement sand aggregate mixture with uh, cement content of 500 kg per meter cube, 360 kg per meter cube, 200 kg per meter cube depending on that also this shrinkage will vary and you can see that most shrinkage happens for only cement paste when it is just a cement paste that time at around 3 hours from casting there is a lot of shrinkage that happens let us check the next shrinkage that is a drying shrinkage drying shrinkage is an everlasting process now uh, we also saw this drying in the previous plastic shrinkage case but that was different that was water getting dried up from the plastic stage itself this drying shrinkage is water getting dried up after in the in the hardened stage okay so this drying shrinkage is related to the hardened stage the previous case was related with the plastic case so it is an everlasting process and structure is subjected to drying conditions all the time because our concrete structure is subjected to a lot of harsh environments and high temperatures of sun as well. The hydration of entire cement does not take place at the same time. It is a long process and the water which does not contribute to hydration is the free water. So you all know that the cement gains its strength by a process called as the hydration process in which it reacts with the required amount of water to form a gel and then the, that gel hardens. But the water which does not react with the cement because all of the water will not react with the cement at the same time. Now, that is the reason the entire hydration process does not take place at the same time there, are, there is some unhydrated cement grains as well and also there is some free water which is present this free water is up for drying so this free water can be dried up easily the loss of this free water in a hardened concrete does not cause much change in volume but the loss of water from the gel pores causes change in the volume so this free water is there inside the cavity uh, if you remember the creep part that we just did in the previous lecture in that creep part I had told that a cement structure a cement paste will con consist of unhydrated cement grains and then it will consist of hydrated cement grains in hydrated cement grains it will again consist of gel pores and it will consist of cavities so this free water is lodged in the cavities and in the gel pores also there is called something called as gel water if that gel water is lost then the volume reduction happens of the paste the water in gel pores is lost progressively over time as the concrete is subjected to drying conditions it is theoretically estimated that the total linear change due to long time drying shrinkage could be of the order of 10,000 into 10 is to minus 6 but values up to 4000 into 10 is to minus 6 have been actually observed so here it is given and this drying shrinkage will also depend on your ambient humidity how much humidity is there around you so depending on the relative humidity you can see in this graph when there is just 50% of relative humidity there is more shrinkage 
when there is 100% relative humidity the shrinkage is reduced and this is time log scale and here it is given in days then we move to years so you can see as the years progress for lesser relative humidity the shrinkage increases while for 100% relative humidity the shrinkage decreases slowly so that was about drying shrinkage let us learn about the autogenous shrinkage now this word autogenous consists of a word called as auto auto is auto means something that is happening by itself okay so autogenous shrinkage means something that is happening by itself there is no requirement of something external it is happening internally inside the concrete now what happens exactly is that when the concrete is fresh and when it is starting with that hydration process a lot of water is uh, uh, you know it contributes to that hydration process and uh, a lot of water is lost immediately there is still free water left but then uh, almost around 90% uh, of the water is immediately used for the hydration process and this creates some capillaries inside the concrete or uh, some cavities inside the concrete so these capillaries because of the surface tension action they will cause the shrinkage of the concrete so autogenous shrinkage is an important phenomena in young concrete at low water cement ratios less than about 0.42 all the water is rapidly drawn into the hydration process and the demand for more water creates very fine capillaries the surface tension within the capillaries causes autogenous shrinkage so what is actually happening is you don't need anything external here to cause shrinkage the demand for water cement ratio itself is causing the shrinkage of the concrete and uh, this is also sometimes called as chemical shrinkage or self desiccation which can lead to cracking this can be largely avoided by keeping the surface of the concrete continuously wet conventional curing by sealing the surface to prevent evaporation is not enough and water curing is essential so in this even if you cover your concrete with a plastic it won't um, it won't matter you will have to provide externally water to the concrete so that the demand for more water which was created that demand can be fulfilled and uh, the capillaries then won't cause the due to the surface tension it won't cause the shrinkage of the concrete with wet curing water is drawn into the capillaries and the shrinkage does not occur carbonation shrinkage is considered to be very slow shrinkage and if you have, if you remember we have come across this carbonation term before and uh, it is the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere that reacts with the water inside the hydrate inside the concrete to form calcium hydroxide so carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere it reacts with water and it forms calcium hydroxide which gets converted to calcium carbonate and also some other cement compounds are decomposed so that water which was present inside the body of the concrete it reacts with the carbon dioxide such a complete decomposition of calcium compound in hydrated cement is chemically possible even at low pressure of carbon dioxide in normal atmosphere carbonation penetrates beyond the exposed surface of concrete slowly and because of this what happens is the permeability of the concrete is reduced and the water loss is more frequent carbonation of concrete redu reduces the permeability as the magnitude of carbonation shrinkage is very small when compared to long term drying shrinkage this aspect is not of much significance so that's it about the shrinkage part in the next lecture we'll be starting with the new module till then take care thank you